What's a story from history that made you go, what the? Agnes MacDonald. Wife of the first Canadian Prime Minister. Traveled with her husband out west after the completion of the Transcontinental Railroad. She was really excited to see the country. But to her dismay she couldn't see much from inside the train because the steam from the engine blocked the view. Her solution. They tied a chair to the cow catcher on the front of the train and then tied her to the chair. She rode to British Columbia tied to the front of the train like a ship's figurehead. In ancient Egypt. Servants were smeared with honey to attract flies away from the pharaoh. Makes me wonder. There was a samurai who was actually worried about how obsolete their system had become and now that samurais were no longer needed in Japan. He decided to go to Korea and insult them so much that they would kill him and thus the rest samurais would avenge him by going to war with Korea and proving their worth. People in the Middle Ages sentenced insects to exile after destroying crops. Xerxes I. He ordered to build a bridge across the Hellespont and when it was nearly completed. A storm had destroyed the bridge. He got so ed off that he ordered the soldiers to whip the sea 300 times for not complying with his plans. Edit. Apparently he also ordered for all the engineers who built the bridge to be beheaded before whipping the sea. Apparently in ancient Egypt the pharaoh would rub one out into the Nile in a ritual to make sure the fields would be fertile. There was actually a whole lot of overt male duality in ancient Egyptian religion. Their creation myth is legitimately that the first god, Atom, rose out of the waters, rubbed one out, and the next generation of gods sprang from that first ejaculation. No jokes. Pretty much all their statues featured giant boners up until the early Christians went about knocking them off. The earliest Egyptologists were Victorian era and were much too embarrassed about it all to publicize it. So it's been largely brushed under the rug. Edit. Crassus. A Roman politician is said to be one of the richest people in history. He had a number of endeavors. But one was real estate. He didn't buy property in the conventional sense. He formed a fire department to serve the city. When a fire broke out. He rushed there. And asked if he could buy the property for its value. The owner usually would agree. Because while they would lose their home. The fire department would put out the fire and they would keep their possessions. If they didn't agree. He just stood there and watched it burn. Once everything was destroyed. He would offer again. At a pittance of the original price. At one point he owned one stroke three of the real estate in the city of Rome. In about 70 BC. When Rome was immensely wealthy. The military government of Myanmar built an entirely new capital in the middle of the jungle from scratch simply because their astrologer told them to. Terror eating a ring baby. Terror look at me. Did you eat a ring baby? At the 1904 Olympics in Street. Louis. The marathon was a total mess. The first place finisher did most of the race in a car. The guy in second almost died from eating rat poison. And the fourth place finisher raced in dress pants and shoes. And took a nap by the side of the road for part of the race. The most WTF history fact I know. Messy as well as comic. Rather than use this power to rule or even conquer new lands. Nero still dreamed of being an artist. Cheered by an adoring public. He played the lyre. Wrote poetry and sang. But Romans consider the idea of an emperor performing on stage as the ultimate disgrace. Demonstrating a disrespectful and scandalous lack of dignity. Nero either didn't care or craved the adulation too much. He forced people to watch his performances without letting them leave. Which. Suetonius wrote. Led them to pretend they had died so they would be carried out of the theater. Mansa Musa was the richest man in history. He went on a pilgrimage. And was so generous with his gold along the way that he destroyed economies of cities he passed through for years after with hyperinflation. You forgot the best part. He wasn't actually giving it away so much as buying souvenirs at highly inflated prices. This guy literally destroyed economies with souvenir shopping. Caligula Emperor of Rome. Sure people know about him making his horse a senator. But another story is when he failed to invade Britain after not getting across the channel. 
Instead of admitting defeat he chose his most British looking soldiers. Marched them back in chains and paraded them through Rome as his spoils of war. The big thing in Victorian England was wallpaper which was dyed a certain shade of green. Green was considered to be a calming color. And this particular shade the most beautiful green in the world. It was used not only in wallpaper. But also to dye dresses. Fake flowers for hats. And even confectionery. The dye was called Shields Green. After its inventor. Its key ingredient? Arsenic. Yes. People were happily covering their walls in deadly poison. And quite a few people died as a result. Putting arsenic in wallpaper and other items was never banned by the government. It just fell out of fashion. Dude named Jack Churchill and his exploits. Nutcase in France during World War II. Last man to successfully use a bow and sword in war. Would charge enemies playing the bagpipes. Absolute badass. One time took out multiple German guards, with a bow, by the light of their cigarettes. This little excerpt from a story about a war between Maori tribes in New Zealand. Comma when women and children attempted to flee the Pukarangirapu they were mercilessly slaughtered and eaten. When the men emerged in a weakened state many of them jumped over the cliff to avoid the Waikato warriors. The fugitives were tracked down and killed anyway. T. Wero Aero killed 150 prisoners with his favorite greenstone mirror. Only stopping when his arm swelled up from overuse. A greenstone mirror is basically a club made of nephrite jade. King Henry VIII trying to conceive a boy. His son, Edward VI, went on to die at 15 years old and one of his daughters, Elizabeth I, went on to become one of the most celebrated monarchs England has ever had. I'm sure most are familiar with the execution of the Romanov family, the immediate family. With the Tsar and Tsarina and all the kids. However. They didn't stop there. They really tried to get rid of all the Romanovs. Including a princess turned little nun who was thrown down a mine shaft. Bombarded with grenades and eventually starved to death. Wait so she survived the mine shaft and grenade bombardment? In the 1500s the Czech would travel all the way across the Alps to exhume papal Rome's bodies and then bring them back. Dress them up in chick robes then put on display in churches. The accompanying paintings are absolutely lurid and beautiful at the same time. The exhumed bodies are holy now. HMS Dreadnought was designed to be the most modern battleship of the time. They still decided to put a ram on it. As other ships in history would often ram each other. Despite her guns being able to hit opponents at a much longer range than a ram would be useful at. She only sank one enemy vessel in World War 1. A U-boat. Which he rammed. It's the only time a battleship successfully destroyed an enemy submarine intentionally. Another little one. Admiral Hood was killed in a magazine explosion. Later. The HMS Hood was destroyed in a magazine explosion. Britain invaded China because they were not by our heroine Opius. The Opium Wars. When construction of the Great Pyramids began for 500 years ago. There were still woolly mammoths living on Wrangel Island. Off the coast of Siberia. Although. Most woolly mammoths died out by 10. 000 years ago. A small group of 500 to 1. 000 survived there until 1650 BC. I always like the one that says Cleopatra is closer to us. In time. Than the pyramids were to her. How the assassination of Archduke Ferdinand. The cause of World War 1 and all the subsequent wars. Was a result of bumbling assassins and a stupid stroke of luck. Long story short. After a failed attempt. One of the assassins. Princip. Escapes to a restaurant to hide and eat in shame. Fernandad was on his way to the hospital because his companions were injured in the explosive attempt. Ferdinand driver makes a turn down the wrong street and the car stalls right in front of Princip. Princip then fatally shoots Ferdinand. TL. DR. A turn down the wrong street led to World War 1. Edit. Only thing I can think of are two stories from a book I listened to recently on World War 2. Specifically from the Siege of Leningrad. 
One dealt with an elderly woman living in the city who became so maddened by hunger that when she could find no food in her apartment, she went to her cupboards, took every dish and other eating vessel in her home, and broke them on the floor. Before scrounging through the debris in search of crumbs. The other involved young people, can't remember how old they were, who went out into the city in search of horse meat and witnessed a truck carrying a pile of bodies and body parts from the countless dead littering the streets. Both from starvation and the German shelling. They heard a voice come from someone near the bottom of the pile. I'm not dead. Please help me. Then the truck drove off. Edits. Meanwhile. A group of scientists and their families starved protecting their university's seed collection to preserve it for the future generations. They had to set up a buddy system to keep each others from riding the vault. When the German light cruiser Emden entered the harbor of Penang and sunk a Russian light cruiser allegedly 89 crew members. But also 60 prostitutes died on the Russian ship. It's got to be the 10th BCT's stand in the Battle of Yeltong Bridge. Basically 900 plus Filipino soldiers. Cooks. Medics and a chaplain were left abandoned against around 3. 0005. 000 Chinese troops with propaganda proclaiming it to be 40. 000. They weren't even forced out of the position at the end of the battle and actually lead a successful counterattack to retrieve some of their forces before they were ordered to retreat. So yeah. What the? Imagine being the chaplain. One moment you're giving the battalion a morning ceremony. When Ramesses II finally conquered this pesky nation, I'm sorry I forgot, he enslaved 10,000 of their soldiers. Had them castrated and when he was buried had them buried with him. He really held a grudge against them. More Soviets died during the Battle of Stalingrad than British and American servicemen did in all of World War II. The first president of Equatorial Guinea killed something like a fifth of his population because he was high. That time the Ottoman Empire raided the coast of Iceland in a reverse Viking move. No children died in fires in Massachusetts in 2020. I forgot which army but the use of plague bodies in catapults thrown over some castle walls as the first use of bioweapons. Pythagoras had a math cult that worshipped numbers. Elizabeth Bathory was a countess from the 1600s who tortured murdered a bunch of young girls and women and supposedly bathed in their blood because she believed it would give her eternal youth. They used umbrellas on sunny days in England to avoid getting hit by thrown out the windows back in the days. I forget her name. But some badass woman whom everyone was scared less of. Got an entire village to bring her three pigeons and three doves from each household. When she got the birds. Her army tied bags with a flammable substance in them. Lit them on fire. Then all of the birds were released at once. Their nest acted as kindling and burned the entire village down edit. This kind of blew up overnight. And some people responded that it was street. Olga Kiev. Bat bombs in World War 2. So ridiculous. I can't remember the name of the country. But I once heard a story about a country. That up until the mid 60s in the UK. You could go to prison for attempted murder. If you tried to commit suicide. I only found this out recently. It made me go what the. Back then there was a punishment where they stick a spear up from your rear and it comes out your chest. It's in multiple different points in history that this punishment was used but the reason it was used was messed up. For example. A woman who cheats on her husband can be staked immediately. Semicolon. There's also a story about a man being staked once and said to the soldier doing it to him that if he was going to do it he should do it properly. I don't know how the spearing was messed up but the bigger question should be why he chose to have the soldier do it again. Just read the book Humans. A brief history of how we edit all up by Tom Phillips. Leopold II of Belgium killed an estimated 10 million people in the Congo. Natives were forced to work rubber and in many instances his soldiers would cut off the hands of any workers who didn't reach their targets. In some instances they would go as far as cutting hands off children including infants as punishment. 
All this without allegedly ever setting foot in the Congo. So many Sam O'Nella references. Recent history. Eric Prince. Blackwater. Prince shows up again facilitating Trump interests in the Ukraine. Then Prince's sister, Betsy D. Voss, is named Secretary of Education. Interesting guy. Probably whatever happens between now and the 20th. Some French lady got decapitated three times and it didn't work all three times and she eventually bleed out. Head game strong. That the Prophet Muhammad from Islam actually married and dead a 9 year old when he was like 50. She was 6 when they were married. Muhammad started as sorely abusing her right away but he waited until she was 9 before committing virginally penetrative RP onto her. The history of repressions in USSR in 1929 to 1953 years. The story of Frey Bentus. In World War 1 a British tank crew got stuck in some mud where an artillery shell hit. The tank was completely stuck and with the Germans and the British trying to destroy the tank. They held it for over 3 days before they had to crawl their trench with their Lewis guns. Edit. So on the 6th of January. 2021. A bunch of rednecks stormed the capital of the United States of America at the urging of their cult leader. Sorry. President. Jedwabn. Poland during World War II. Spoiler alert. Nazis tell Poles to get rid of some Jewish townspeople and the Poles take it farther than the Nazis expected. In fact. Similar pogroms where hundreds of Jews were killed by Poles happened across dozens of Polish towns during World War II. Albert Einstein and his cousin. That's not what relativity is supposed to mean. Back in 20th century. When Cold War was relevant. USA was willing to battle socialism anything. Even if that meant the country won't have future. Basically clean air. Minimum wage that can support people. Social justice. Free education and free healthcare are the things USA deemed as socialist. I don't support socialism. But. I don't support socialism. So you don't want farm subsidies? USA is the biggest agrarian socialist country in the world. The funniest thing is that the emergence of the middle class in America is largely due to socialist legislation like the New Deal and the GI Bill of Rights in the 40s and 50s. Go to Europe. Particularly Denmark. Extremely socialist. The happiest place on earth. Don't believe the US government's claims that socialism sucks. Brigitte Ross. Far left terrorist group active in Italy in the 1970s 80s. Planned to kidnap centrist politician Aldo Moro. To kill his bodyguards they had guns in bags and dressed up as flight attendants waiting for their bus to the airport to avoid being sus while waiting for Morrow's car to come to a junction. Their plan almost failed when an old lady stopped by asking them infos about some incoming flights. She left just minutes before the attack. Aldo Moro ended up getting kidnapped and killed. Churchill starved to death 3 million Indians, Bengals through lots of Thai actions including scorching the earth and exporting all their food leaving them to die. During the Armenian Genocide. A common killing tactic was to cram bundles of Armenians into caves and start a fire at the entrance. Black Wall Street. The fact that it even existed. Was destroyed by white supremacists. Just as shocking has been the more recent response. In 1996 a commission laid out recommendations which included reparations and other benefits. Despite the committee's suggestions the city gave the survivors medals. Can you imagine receiving a participation trophy for being a victim of a crime against humanity? This is in the mid 1990s. Also. The event was largely erased from Oklahoma's history books. HBO's Watchmen has a very graphic depiction of the event. Edit. My aunts which were sent to residential schools in Canada said the girls wouldn't pee before bed. They'd hold it for when the priests would sneak into the rooms to our pay them. If you peed your bed the priests would move on to another child. Go to love Jesus. Vincent Van Gogh. One of the greatest painters of all time. Died by shooting himself in the stomach twice at a bar. He didn't immediately die though. 
apparently he walked home. Laid in his bed alone for two days until he eventually passed away. It took the investigators back then a very long time, not sure exactly how long, to determine if it was a murder or suicide. Maybe it's not too shocking but I just think it's a very odd way to die. I don't think that's what happened. Van Gogh died of a single, self-inflicted gunshot to the chest. He shot himself in a field. He had even painted the field beforehand. And it was known to be suicide. That pope that put his predecessor's 8 month old corpse on trial. Convicted him of impersonating clergy among other things. And had it thrown in the river.